Your Majesties, Excellencies, Water Prize Laureates, ladies and gentlemen. Jaws, Star Wars, Superman, Jurassic Park, Indiana Jones. Well, naturally, you think of blockbuster movies, but these films also have a common musical denominator. They all have themes composed by John Williams. And John Williams is actually second only to Walt Disney himself when it comes to Oscar nominations. October this year, John Williams will be honored at the Brit Awards in the UK with a Lifetime Achievement Award. And uh, we thought it would be appropriate to uh, begin this year's uh, ceremony by saluting this year's laureate, Dr. Charters, and the International Water Management Institute with maybe one of the most beautiful movie themes ever composed by John Williams. Uh, and this piece of music will be performed by this lovely lady who started playing the violin at the age of five. She waited all of three years before she started touring the world. And she received her education at the prestigious Sibelius Academy of Music in Helsinki, Finland, and has since, during her career, played with uh, some of the most renowned orchestras around the world. And she also had the leading part in, a, in an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical, the instrumental musical called uh, Metal Philharmonic, so she's tougher than she looks. <laughs> so here is the theme from Schindler's List with Karina Ian Nilsson and Linda Lampenius.
Linda Lampenius. And now, would you please welcome the chairman of the Stockholm International Water Institute, as well as the Stockholm Water Foundation, Mr. Peter Forsman. Thank you. Your Majesties, Stockholm Water Prize laureates, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure I welcome you all to the 22nd Stockholm Water Prize Award Ceremony. We are greatly honored to celebrate the occasion in presence of their majesties King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia. Your interest and involvement in, in uh, water and environmental issues are well recognized and highly appreciated by the participants of the World Water Week in Stockholm. And then, of course, a warm welcome to this year's Stockholm Water Prize laureate, the International Water Man Management Institute, its director, uh, General Colin Charters, and all colleagues of his company who are present here tonight. The International Water Management Institute has been awarded the 2012 Stockholm Water Prize for their pioneering research to improve water management in agriculture in developing countries. A presentation of those interesting and impressive work will be made later by Dr. Paul Taylor a member of the nominating committee. The Stockholm Water Prize was established by the Stockholm Water Foundation in 1990 and awarded for the first time in 1991. The prize has received support from the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, the Royal Swedish Academy of Engineering Sciences, the International Water Association, and the Water Environment Federation. And today, 19 companies and organizations known as the founders of the Stockholm Water Prize stand together with the city of Stockholm behind the prize. We thank you all for your involvement and support. And over the years, the Stockholm Water Prize has won an increasing respect and prestige all over the world and the laureates have, with no expectations, been outstanding and highly respected persons or organizations. And this week, more than 2,500 experts representing business, governments, the water management and science sectors, organizations, and many more, are assembled here in Stockholm for the 2012 World Water Week. The theme of the week, food and water security for the future, has been more engagement than maybe ever before. What we have to face is that in the year 2050, we have to feed nine billion peoples on this planet. How can we feed them? How can we offer them good drinking water? How can we offer them sanitation of quality. This is a challenge that has engaged all of you during this week. The discussions have been intense, uh, not the least demonstrated this morning at the Laureate Seminar where Your Majesty were present. And I, it was a big mixture of are we pessimist or are we optimist? And I will not go into detail with that, but personally I'm an optimist. And uh, so I thank you all participants during this week for your engagement because we are discussing serious issues for the future. Other prizes have been awarded this week, namely the Stockholm Junior Water Prize, yesterday at a very nice ceremony, and the winner of that prize was a young team of students from Singapore who had um, 
uh, a project on cleaning wastewater by the use of sodium activated clay. And I was impressed by it, although I don't understand all the details, but those who were experts were extremely uh, impressed. And secondly, the Industry Water Award this year awarded to PepsiCo. And PepsiCo will recognize for their work to considerably reduce water consumption in its production and its commitment beyond the company's own operations to help solve water challenges on a broad scale. And a few final words. An organization like CV is never stable. But there are two uh, changes that have happened that I would like to underline. For many, many years, Anders Bantel was the executive director of CV. He left it, uh, CV. He left it earlier this year, and we would like to thank you, Anders, for all your contribution over the, those years. And at the same time, I would like to congratulate and welcome Torgny Holmgren to take up his position, and uh, we wish you all the best for the future. And altogether, we are proud that Stockholm has become an attractive and well-attended annual meeting place for the water world. And I hope you, together with me, will have an enjoyable evening together. Thank you. Do you remem remember the time of two television channels? It wasn't that long ago. I started working in television when there was two channels around. And when I tell younger people at the age of 20 or lower, you know, they look at me like, shouldn't you be in a museum? Um, anyway, the way it was in Sweden was that you checked out channel one. If there was nothing on, you checked channel two. If, if there was nothing on there either, you went to bed and you slept your eight hours. Uh, there wasn't this multitude of channels craving your attention, nor was there any social media bonanza in a computer next to your bed or wherever, you know, beckoning you with the words, you know, I'll keep you awake for longer than you need. We slept better, better in the days of two channels, I'm certain. And if there isn't, there certainly will be scientific research to prove my point. I hope you agree. Whether you do or not, where is this leading? This is leading to the next piece of music, which I heard on television back in the 70s. I'm sure most of you Swedes will also recognize it as used frequently on television. It's a folk tune, but made uh, immortal and uh, immensely popular by Swedish jazz pianist Jan Johansson. Uh, today, it will be performed by two members of the percussion ensemble Chromata, together with our vocalist Du Jour, Sanna Martin. Visa från utan myra. En gång såg jag den man Mina ögon blev som förvända Så som vinden gångade han Rask och orädd, säker att segra Han såg på mig och han låg Han såg min ros och låg Sen han gångade mig förbi Men han gångar mig förbi En 
endast en gång såg jag den man. Mina ögon blev som förvända, så som solen strålade han. All min levnad kom han att ändra. Han tog på mig och han log. Han tog min ros och log. Sen han gångade mig förbi. Men han gångar mig förbi. Endast en gång såg jag den man. Mina ögon blev som förvända. Sådan man, sån man är han. Att hans hand kan livet fullända. Han bröt mitt motstånd, han log. Han bröt min ros och log. Gångade mig förbi, men han gångar mig förbi. Please welcome a member of the Stockholm Water Prize nominating committee, Dr. Paul Taylor. Your Majesties, Excellencies, Stockholm Water Prize laureates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Like Mr. Forsman, I'm also an optimist about our water future, and it's our institutions like our laureate this year that, that I think justify that, that um, optimism. It's my great honor, privilege, and pleasure to present to you the 2012 Stockholm Water Prize laureate, the International Water Management Institute. The prize is awarded for their pioneering research that has served to improve agricultural water management enhance food security, protect environmental health, and alleviate poverty in developing countries. The International Water Management Institute, with headquarters in Colombo, Sri Lanka, and regional offices across Asia and Africa, is, is the foremost organization in agricultural water management, stimulating widespread change in agricultural policy and practice. 70% of global freshwater withdrawals are used in agriculture. With global food demand projected to double by mid-century, more food will need to be grown with less water. The International Water Management Institute has been the driving force promoting policies and techniques to help farmers to produce more crop per drop and to implement solutions that enable agriculture to cultivate enough food to feed our planet's growing population. The nomination committee was impressed by the impact, importance, and quality of the work of the Institute, and I hope that this award will also serve to attract more attention to the importance of water management in agriculture. Moving to examples of specific achievements of the laureate, the International Water Management Institute has consistently looked at ways to create positive incentives for farmers and policymakers to manage water more equitably and efficiently. An early focus of its work uh, was on poorly performing irrigation systems across Asia. And it had the effect of transforming the way irrigation systems are managed to put responsibilities in the hands of the irrigators themselves. A system which has been adopted on an almost global scale. 
The Institute provides influential guidance on groundwater management, on gender, and on river basin management, amongst many others. It was recent research by the Institute that brought recognition to the fact that 20 million hectares of peri-urban land are irrigated with wastewater, supporting livelihoods of millions of people. This resulted in a major review of policies on wastewater management in collaboration with the World Health Organization and is already contributing directly to improved sanitation and food safety practices in urban areas of many developing countries. The International Water Management Institute has established its place as the definitive source for comprehensive data and knowledge in water resources. From 2002 to 2007, the Institute led a team of 700 scientists to produce a comprehensive assessment of water management and agriculture. This report established an unprecedented knowledge base on the status of global water and land resources and is one of the most influential studies produced on water and agricultural policy. By providing clear evidence of where and how water scarcity has increased and its impact on all se sectors of the economy, the report's findings have placed sustainable water resources management as a priority issue for governments, industries, and international organizations around the world. Over 100,000 publications are downloaded from the Institute's website every month and are widely read on leading digital repositories worldwide. The International Water Management Institute shapes its research by focusing on the desirable future, a vision of how a new ecosystems-based approach to agriculture can protect natural systems and potentially double agricultural production is being led by the Institute and UNEP, the United Nations Environment Programme. Continued work in this area can radically change how agriculture is practiced in the future and ensure food security for a population set to reach 9 billion, as we have heard, by 2050. In my opinion, it's the unique mix of technical specialists and social scientists, together with, with its extensive collaboration with practitioners and scientists around the world that has enabled the Institute to tackle complex problems of water management that have confounded the best efforts of policymakers and water users. During the quarter century of its existence, the Institute has helped um, Governments, water user associations, farmer communities, as well as private sector organizations to manage the impact of water use on livelihoods, on food security, health, the environment, and gender. The International Water Management Institute stands above others thanks to maintaining high standards of scientific integrity while being successful in mobilizing this large community of stakeholders and achieving great impact in the sphere of agricultural water management. Dr. Colin Charters, Director General of the International Water Management Institute, would you please come forward to receive the 2012 Stockholm Water Prize from the hands of His Majesty the King. Your Majesties, Excellencies, Mayor Sten Norden, President of the City Council, Margareta Bjork, Water Prize Laureates, ladies and gentlemen. I am truly greatly honored to receive this prestigious prize on behalf of the International Water Management Institute and its staff. It recognizes over a quarter of a century's concerted effort in the water and food sector. 
I would particularly also like to pay tribute to the past staff and directors general. Tom Wickham was the first uh, director general, Roberto Lenton, who's with us tonight, David Seckler, and Frank Reisman, and also to Dr. David Molden, who pioneered much of our innovative science, and I think David is with us in the audience as well. And past and present board members and chairs for their guidance over the years. A particular mention must also go here to Margaret Catley Carson for her continued support and encouragement of the Institute over many years. I would also, of course, like to thank the Stockholm International Water Institute and the sponsors of the Stockholm Water Prize for making all this possible. I go to many water meetings around the world, but this one is always special, brilliantly organized and scientifically stimulating. Finally, I would like to mention the continued support that our staff get from their partners, many of whom, including my wife Margaret, gave up their own careers to enable us to work in exciting, but often challenging environments far from home. I want to end with an announcement. The Stockholm Water Prize has a very generous cash component. At EMI, we have decided to use these funds to, to endow a capacity building program for, for staff from our partner organizations and other deserving individuals in developing countries. There will be particular emphasis on supporting women in this program. So once again, on behalf of IMI, thank you so much to Siwi for recognizing our work in this area which is critical to the future of humanity. Thank you. Congratulations. Here's the thing with true musicians. When they meet other true musicians, they, they do what they're supposed to do, but then usually, or almost always, they want to do something else, something extra. This is what happened during the rehearsals that we had this afternoon. So the gentlemen that we're about to meet, we've already met two of them. There's actually four of them, and we will meet them again in something that wasn't planned, but uh, I'm sure it will turn out Fabulous. Uh, they toured Australia uh, in April this year. Uh, they're headed for South America in the fall and uh, in the new year you can hear them in Washington DC. Uh, here they are with uh, music for pieces of wood. Krumata.
Kromata. And as I said, in April they uh, toured Australia. ABBA was big in Australia. Those of you who have attended this ceremony for a number of years know that I always find an excuse to talk about ABBA. Bear with me, uh, there's a reason for this. Uh, the ABBA musical, Mamma Mia, is of course a hit all over the world, and there has been a lot of speculations. Will there be a, f a sequel or not? Um, I don't know, but uh, Bjorn Ulvius and Benny Andersson have also written other musicals. Chess has been produced in London and New York, and there is one more. It's called Christina. And uh, if Mamma Mia is really, really, I mean, it makes you happy, then Christina really wouldn't do as a follow-up because it's four hours of hardship and misery. It's a very, very good story and it's very well written, but it's, it's not a pick-me-up, more sort of bring me down and think about tough things. It is based on, of course, the story of Swedish emigrants who left their home country about 100 years ago to find a better life on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. And what it has is uh, quite a few very, very beautiful melodies. We're going to hear one of them, and we have once again been joined by Linda Lampenius and Karina E. Nilsson, and also once more our... Um, as I said, vocalist du jour, a musical veteran, far too humble for her own good. Sana Martin and Down to the Sea. Down to the sea Hurry down to the sea Stopping for none How you run Little stream Faster and faster a slave, not like me, choosing your way as you please, at your ease, your own master. So
Sanna Martin, Linda Lampenius, Karina E. Nilsson. Thank you. And I forgot to thank the Stockholm Brass Ensemble and their conductor, Ola Hermansson. Thank you. And this ends the 22nd Stockholm Water Prize Award Ceremony as their majesties will leave. Would you please rise? <laughs>